all know the much touted metaphor of bread. But it's been used over the last days to ask the question, what is the sugar that we have in our life which catalyzes the experiences of life, the flower, the yeast, and the water, to homogenize, to mix and meld, to become dough, or metaphorically speaking, our truth, our truth, and our wisdom. If we continue with that metaphor, we have to come to the phase of the dough. And we know the nature of dough. It has to rise and then be beaten down again and again. But we need no stories to exemplify this phase for us. We all know what it's like to be beaten down again and again and again. But then we come to another phase, and that phase is the cooking of the dough to make bread. Now there's a question. What is the fire in us that cooks the dough to make the bread that can nurture our self and all of life. There is that story of the widow who had seven children, the oldest of which was a boy named Reuben, only ten years old. But Reuben was special. Every day he went to the marketplace and he sorted the rotten fruit from the fresh for the stall holders. He swept their stalls clean so that he could make a few coins to help to feed his family. But then there was that special day. On the evening before the Sabbath, he worked particularly hard so that he could afford to buy the bread, the wine, and the candles to celebrate the Sabbath day. And the days went on. But one day, when Reuben was in the marketplace, a messenger came around to the coffee shops asking, was there a family in town called Reuben ben Arif? And this was his father's name. He was named after his father. This was his family name. And he said, this is my family. So the messenger came home with Reuben and handed Reuben's mother a letter. And in that letter, it said that her late husband's brother had died and bequeathed the family a sum of money. But the uncle lived far away, far, far away across a great desert. And when the widow read the letter, tears came to her eyes. How could she leave her children and go to claim this inheritance? And then Reuben spoke up and he said, I will go. I will go and claim the money. And his mother said, but you're only 10 years old. How can you have this responsibility? I will go, said Reuben. But on one proviso, that the caravan Lear will allow me to fulfill my ritual obligations before the Sabbath day. But when the mother went to the cavalier head. 
He said, oh, oh, if, if I have to stop a day, it will cost you more money. Which the widow did not have. But Reuben was adamant. He would undertake this task only if he were allowed to fulfill his ritual obligations. So his mother sold the last piece of jewelry that she had, her wedding ring, to give to the leader of the caravan to ensure that the caravan stopped on the evening before the Sabbath. And so Reuben joined the caravan and they set out across the desert. But it came to the eve of the Sabbath. And when Reuben said, as the moon was coming up, Now we must stop as you promised. The caravan head pretended that he knew nothing about it. I know nothing about such agreement, he said. We are not stopping. This delays our caravan and its destination. So Reuben had a great battle within himself. But again, he was adamant. He said, then you must leave me here. And so the caravan stopped to allow Reuben to descend from his camel, taking his accoutrements with him, his wine, his bread, and his candles. And the caravan went on, and Reuben saw them as they disappeared into the distant sand. He was afraid. His heart was beating fast as he looked around at the vast, vast emptiness. But then he took out the wine, the bread and the candles and set up his little station to make his ritual. But as he was doing so, he noticed coming towards him a great field of sand and he was afraid. This desert was known for its wild animals and sure enough as the sand approached in its midst was a great lion. As the lion approached, Reuben quaked and was afraid. His life was to end here, he prayed. But as the lion came near, an amazing thing happened. Instead of attacking him, devouring him, it sat down beside his little ritualistic station, sighed and remained, remained silent as Reuben went on with his ritual. That night, Reuben lay down to sleep with the lion as his guard he slept soundly, peacefully. In the morning, when he awoke, the lion indicated that he should climb, Reuben should climb on his back. And he did. And the lion bounded off across the desert and in what seemed like a few minutes, they were approaching the caravan. Now, when the head of the caravan and the others traveling with him saw the great lion approaching, they were mightily afraid. 
But when they saw Reuben on the lion's back, they were not only afraid, but awed. The lion approached and uh, the head of the caravan and all who accompanied him bowed down in recognition of the might of this creature and the young man he carried. The caravan head admitted he was wrong apologized and asked Reuben to accompany them to the city that they were nearing, the city in which the uncle's abode was. When they arrived, as the great lion with Reuben on his back walked down the street, people ran in all directions until they came to the house of the uncle. Reuben descended from the lion who waited quietly outside while it was recognized that Reuben was indeed <coughs> the nephew and money was handed over. Reuben took his bag of money and again sat on the great lion who bounded off in the direction of his home town. It seemed that in no time at all Reuben and the lion were back at the city gates. The lion indicated that Reuben should alight from his back and carrying his bag of money. Reuben bowed knowing that the lion was departing and he watched as the lion disappeared into the distance. But Reuben knew that even though this lion in the flesh had departed, that this lion was with him always. He made his way back to his mother's house and there was great rejoicing great, great rejoicing at his safe return and the beneficence that they had received. In asking the question, <coughs> what is the fire that we have with us that bakes the dough of the experiences and perceptions that have become our wisdom, our truths, into the bread that can nurture us and all of life. What does this lion represent in this story relative to the answer to this question. What does the lion represent for us? We know that we had a fire in our belly, the fire that drove us to this place where we have the sugar that makes all experiences, catalyzes or into wisdom.
truth. Knowledge. We know what it's like to be beaten down, humbled. What is this fire that no longer impels us, no longer drives us to seek, but a fire that cooks the dough of our wisdom, our truth, our knowledge, and allows it to feed life. The lion, what is it for you? <coughs> to me it's like the, <coughs> the driving force to us a higher consciousness. It takes us to our inheritance, which is what we are. Is it not the experience all oh, that gave him that courage to, to do all that? Yes. Our fire, isn't it? It doesn't go away, does it? It doesn't go away. Yes. It's always with us, our lion, isn't it? Can we give it a name? That experience. What name would you give it? <laughs>